Hello and welcome to University of Shed.net. This lecture is taken from University of Shed's economic series and is on the Breton Wood System. Although technically within the United Nations system, the Breton Woods institutions, the two most important of which are the World Bank and the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, have possessed a strong sense of their own independence since their inception in July 1944. Named after the village in New Hampshire, USA, where 44 allied countries met to discuss the closer integration and management of the global economy, their purpose was clearly outlined by US Treasury Secretary Henry Morgenthau, who said that the aim of the conference was the creation of a dynamic world community in which the peoples of every nation will be able to realise their potentialities in peace. The institutions were established whilst the Second World War was still in process, but was clear that the Allies were going to win. The spectre of millions of bodies on the battlefield and of the Great Depression just a decade and a half previously loomed large in the minds of the delegates, and it was clear that a new global financial order was necessary. The IMF's responsibility was to monitor exchange rates and to lend reserve currencies to nations with trade deficits thereby helping them stave off bankruptcy and hyperinflation. Its goal was also to encourage and further international trade. The role of the World Bank can be seen in its original name, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. The IBRD would lend money to countries whose economies and systems of infrastructure had been ravaged during the war. Nowadays, the IMF has 187 members, four times the number of original signatories. Since its inception, the IMF has had to deal with a number of severe economic crises, all of which have shaped its role and responsibilities in some way. This includes the end of the fixed rate exchange system in 1971, the oil shocks of the mid-1970s, the international debt crisis of the 1980s, the economic fallout following the collapse of the Soviet Union after 1989 and the international economic crisis from 2007 onwards. Its work can be categorised as falling into three distinct areas. Surveillance, observing global trends and advising on macroeconomic issues. Technical assistance, assisting low and middle income countries in managing their economies and lending providing support to help countries avoid balance of payment deficit and potential bankruptcy. The World Bank is the largest public development institution in the world. In 2010 it lent 72 billion US dollars. Its main focus is on reducing poverty and creating sustainable growth in the world's poorest countries, specifically those in Africa as well as post-conflict countries and fragile states. The World Bank focuses on funding projects, for example building schools and hospitals, or in providing water and electricity. As their name suggests, they also have a global remit and concentrate their efforts on cross-border issues such as trade, climate change and infectious diseases. There are many criticisms made of the IMF and World Bank. Three of the most often repeated ones are, firstly, their economic policies are neoliberal i.e. ultra-free market, and therefore represent a Western ideal of economic interaction, which may not be suitable for all countries. Furthermore, the conditionalities, the enforced economic changes, placed by the institutions on recipient countries through mechanisms such as structural adjustment programmes are unfair. Secondly, the management of the institutions is dominated by industrialised countries. Unlike, say, the UN General Assembly, Voting is dictated by the percentage of shares held, thus allowing some countries to wield an effective veto. Thirdly, there have been questions raised in terms of the ethics of some of the projects funded. For example, hydroelectric dams which may produce much needed power, but the construction of which requires the displacement of indigenous peoples living nearby. In conclusion, the Breton Woods institutions have had a huge influence on the global economy, but they have not been without their controversies. However, at the end of 2011, as national economies struggle, the role of these supranational economic organisations is only going to become more important. <laughs>